Good morning. I'm not sure what we're doing today. Well, I do, but I don't. <laughs> Good morning. It's Friday. It's October 16th. I think I put the date in wrong. I can't remember um, in the description. If I did, I will change that. But it is October 16th. It's a Friday, TGIF. There's a lot happening, and so I'm hoping that you all hop on and see what is going on. Um, today's card is the Eagle, um, which, again, I want you to pay attention to patterns because there's a lot of patterns happening. And as you're checking in, I want you to please let me know where you're at, what's showing up for you, and I am hoping that this is working because Mercury is in full force with retrograde. I've had some technical challenges and timing. I want to go timing. I was so in the flow of paying attention to what's happening in the universe this morning and writing my notes, which my pen didn't want to get off the paper this morning. So I'm hoping everything will jive in the 30 minutes that we have together today. So please check in, let me know where you're at. If you're watching this on replay, please check in. Um, and if you are liking these lies, I'm just gonna do some housekeeping, I guess. Um, if you are liking these lives, to please consider making a donation. We are still only operating at 30% of what we were prior to COVID. So any donation um, that is given, if everybody donated a dollar a month, that it would cover a lot of my expenses that are needed to bring these to you. So let's go into Eagle. Yes, a lot of Eagles. So. <coughs> Sometimes a message doesn't resonate with you on one occasion. And what I, like when I do one-on-one -on -one things with folks, I will say, you may not get it now, but if you see it happening again, like patterns, lessons, we hear this a lot with lessons, right? Lessons keep repeating themselves until you get it. So this is going along the lines too with signs or messages. Good morning, Marissa, nice to see you here. And sorry about your loss. And um, good morning, Heather. So, <coughs> Mercury's in retrograde as well as, well as Mars retrograde. I'm not going to go too much into that today because we will definitely be going over a half hour. But you can check out the updates on those on previous videos. Good morning, Monica. The biggest one that is happening, some of you may have been feeling this since Tuesday, but the official alert didn't come until yesterday. And that is what's called a cosmic ray alert. I posted that on um, my Facebook page, Healing with Spirit. So uh, it was interesting because I had a surge of urgent clients that wanted to come in and see me on Wednesday as well as my dad's been experiencing some very bizarre symptoms that are very concerning. Um, so I'm trying to see if we can treat him holistically and if he's open because he is stubborn. He's so used to doing things for others. He's not very good at receiving. And um, he actually flared up with cellulitis, a really bad case of cellulitis on his leg. And anybody who knows about cellulitis with cardiac patients and um, people with COPD, that could be serious. So this is the things that can get flared up uh, with cosmic ray alerts uh, when we see this happening. There's a bombardment that's happening on the planet as we speak. And in, you can go into my page to go uh, Healing with Spirit to read more about it and to see the conversation that's happening over there. So this is about all the things that are coming together. So you're going to be hearing things. Some of it might seem confusing. So I would say sit with it and see what's showing up for you and see what keeps showing up as far as a pattern too. As far as a numerology standpoint, I wanted just to kind of bring this up because I feel this is important today. 
Um, it is a 12-3 day. So last year was a three year. And you can go onto my blog on my website to read, again, read more about it. But it really, is, it talks about that the theme was how the past, present, and future is colliding. Well, we're in the third quarter of 2020. And if there's been resistance or if, if you've been doing the work, sometimes these things that are showing up for us are to kind of see, well, how far have we come? What is still needed to be composted? You know, and sometimes it's just a reminder that you're on the right track, okay? So the three is also a reminder about communication, which is, hello, Mercury's in retrograde, okay? So for those of you who go, oh, yuck, Mercury retrograde, I would say there's a lot of benefit if you just know how to go into the flow and know how to go in alignment with it, not against it. There's a lot of beautiful things that can happen during Mercury retrograde. Um, especially when it comes to organizing, planning, and there's a lot of RE. Again, go into my page because I go on to all that stuff over there. It is also the Ascended Master number. Okay, so this is about communicating with the Ascended Masters on the other side and how well are we doing that, okay? Eagle has some serious, powerful divinity associated with it, okay? The one and the two associated with the 12 is about the new beginnings and the balance of the yin and the yang and the soul and the ego, which again, a pattern we have been seeing. If you've been on these lives, and if you haven't, you can go into either the tab section on the Facebook group and go under Mornings with Laura. And most of them have been tagged in there. Um, this summer, if it's probably the spring videos, you're probably just gonna have to go into the video section and see, or you can go under the units where it um, has the videos as well. And the two is about the, the balance between the, the ego and the soul. And again, we go into that with the blog. I have a lot of blogs on this where I talk about what's happening for 2020. So if you feel like you need a review to see if you're on track, I would say go onto my website and see, um, and, and go into some of those blogs and see, and evaluate, say, okay, here's a good time to see, am I on track? Mm -hmm. What do I need? Where's the resistance? Maybe what do I, maybe I just need a reminder to just chill that everything has been planted. All the seeds have been planted and I just need a reminder to just shh, quiet the mind and just chill. Okay. Just maybe take a good old pause. The bald eagle, um, it's funny because I felt like they need to go into the numerology. This is the, the number 16 is on here at the eagle. And um, so I saw this as a sign between new beginnings, but also opportunities for new relationships. And the new relationships I see associated, not necessarily with others, but yes, okay? But mostly, because you can't have the kind of relationships with others until you have it with yourself first. So with the soul, with self, with spirit. Um, Monday also, we did the video on Eagle with a slightly different twist. So you might want to, if you wanted to learn more about the Eagle, you might want to check out Monday's video. And yes, you're learning to embrace Mercury and retrograde. Yay. So one of the things I want to keep reminding you on when we do these lives is to look for the patterns. You know, there might be a message that you kind of go, oh, I don't know if I get that. I don't know if that makes sense. And if it doesn't make sense, ask the questions in the comments. Or if it does make sense, say, yes, this like resonates with me. Oh my God, like this, whatever, um, because it helps. And here's the other thing. There are a lot of people that I'm trying to get to engage because Facebook is changing things and it's hindering the access to people getting notified with this information in the group. So they're really pushing engagement. So I highly encourage if you're just watching, even if you just say, hi, I'm here, that's it, and because and you don't feel comfortable, that's okay. Just, you need to kind of get engaged here. Um, the eagle, some of the things I was writing about was that the eagle is a sacred bird for many indigenous cultures, not just a symbol for freedom in this country. Yes, in less than three weeks, we have probably one of the biggest elections of our time that we need to be involved in. If, you have, if you're not voting, regardless of what side you are voting on, and you can't just say, oh, it's just Massachusetts. We already know it's already done. Stop, because this, there's, there's things that are at play. And if you don't get your voice heard, um, we, we don't have any recourse. So again, the voting, if nothing else, is an energy and it's an action. 
um, behind the energy of what you're doing, okay? That is important, okay? The past lives that we had talked about with the ego included, you know, like rising above the storm and that you don't have to go through the storm. And it doesn't mean, you know, there's a fine line between saying you don't have to go through the storm and spiritually bypassing and completely avoiding doing the work that you need to do. Again, I talked about some of this in the past lives and on Monday. You don't necessarily have to go through the storm to heal it, to let it go, or to compost it, but you can rise above it and experience the storm from a distance of, as an observer, through the lens of soul or spirit. So what comes to mind as I was thinking about this this morning is how many of you, like me, are like storm chasers, <laughs> okay? Uh, good morning, Janet. Nice to see you here. Yes, a, to a healthy relationship with self, a theme this week. Yes. So how many of you are like storm chasers? Are that you like you go to the beach or you go to the mountains to like watch a thunderstorm, right? You got to like watch this storm. And why do we do that? And what do you get out of it when you do it, right? You know that this is big, powerful storm, but you're watching it as an observer, right? So, and why do you storm chase, right? There's, there's a certain adrenaline here associated with it. So this is kind of a similar concept is, you know, there's a lot of generational trauma that's surfacing. I've repeated this in the past. There's a lot of personal trauma. I know I've been um, clearing out this year things that I've been doing over 15 years, but highlighting the things that maybe I wasn't ready for in the past that may have been associated with the rape when I was 15 to all to the child abuse or generational traumas like i've been doing a lot of generational like i found out my grandmother's uh sister died at 19 um what is listed on her death certificate what was listed on her death certificate now guess what's one on the ballot for this year right women's rights and roe v wade right well i just found this out two months ago where uh my grandmother's sister died at the age of 19 from criminal abortion is what is listed on her death certificate. I have a copy of her death certificate. And why did she have an abortion? She had an abortion because her father was extraordinarily physically, emotionally abusive and was so fearful of the repercussions of the abuse that she decided to have an abortion instead. So this is some of the generational. I'm sharing this with you because to me, watching some of these things and how it's affecting me with the stuff I'm going to be going through with court. I'm preparing this way for when I go to court because I'm healing those things. And that's the stuff that's surfacing right now. So you may, it might be in your blinders. And if it is, it is okay to call in reinforcements, whether you see me, whether you call your therapist, whether I called in three people in the spiritual community that had three different skill sets before I hired my attorney. <laughs> Okay, because I wanted to, I'm, I'm human enough, even with all my skill sets and even with all the stuff that Spirit was telling me, I needed to make sure I was on the right track and considering <clears throat> what I went through in this most turbulent thing that I, that I experienced over 11 years. Okay, so um, <clears throat> the eagle is coming from the east, right? And this is the place of the rising sun. So this is where... You know, there's, there's a lot of um, folklore associated with eagle flying into the sun and coming into a blaze, right? And then turns into the rising phoenix, right? So there's a reason why the eagle is associated with the east direction and flying in directly into the sun. And so this is a symbol of new beginnings, right? The phoenix is associated, I'm getting goosebumps as I'm saying this. It's a sign of rising from the ashes. And if you notice, we've got dragon here so in eastern medicine dragon and the phoenix are also in one and it's almost like the yin and the yang they balance each other and so this is the powerful stuff that we're experiencing right now and eagle soars high in the skies they can um, see the smallest detail with clarity without losing track of the bigger picture they've done studies with golden eagles i know of golden eagles i'm not sure of bald eagles but i know golden eagles are like down in south america where they will do these little trackers and they will have cameras of them flying like, I don't know how many thousands of feet up. And they will see things down on the ground. They'll have this camera They're like, well, how do they even see this, right? But they can with precision, all right? 
So this is this is savings from a bigger picture. So this is the unity that's being brought in. They nest high in the mountains. Why? Mountains are associated closest to the heavens, right? In a lot of cultures, we go, oh, we have to climb the mountain, right? Well, we look at the ordeal like, oh, the agony, I'm exhausted. I have to climb this freaking mountain. Well, look, look at how far. Well, how about you turn around and see how far you've come for a change? How about you see that once you get there, the view that you're going to see and how much closer you are to spirit or to your soul or to the divinity and the heartbeat of our planet, right? This is what's being called for us. And for Eagle, there are no obstacles. There's only opportunities. So this is a call for us to ascend and to acquire a higher perspective. So you cannot only fly like behind spirit, it's not flying behind spirit. This is about the unity. Isn't this what the theme we have been repeating over and over and over again in these lives since we started doing these in March? Is to be and have equilibrium between the egoic material world and the soul and spirit world. So the eagle here is showing up because it's saying, look, we're not equal. We're not bridging the equality and ascending to a higher place from spirit. We're getting still brought down and sucked into, right? The stuff that the, the, the minutia between the Trumps and the Bidens and the, all that shit instead of seeing the greater picture of what's happening here, okay? So we can fly side by side with great spirit. So my question to you is, before we go into the meditation, have you become trapped in the daily routines maybe you haven't or don't know where to go or what to do next maybe you're feeling like you've been doing the work and all of a sudden you go you don't know what's real anymore you don't know what's not maybe your timelines have been getting i call it time warpy okay like the, it's been blurring and it's kind of freaking you out and you don't know what's real you don't know what's not and you don't even know maybe you feel even a little lost right now and your purpose is even being questioned well mercury retrograde is going to question a lot of this mars retrograde is going to kind of fuel that as well so the eagle is really inviting us to take a deep breath to just spread our wings and when was the last time you just opened them to air them out right good morning patty nice to see you here I've been seeing your posts now. Yay! I'm glad, Paula. Yay! So, this is where I wanted to say, like, we are born to soar the heavens, but for over a thousand years, the human race has forgotten that. Under the guise of formalized religion, and we got to separate formalized religion and spirituality, because formalized religion, initially, was really to control the people. It was to enrich the church and we did all these horrible things and we have to take stock in that, right? This is the stuff like if you if you do belong, this is not to create insults, but we have to heal that past with formalized religion because that religious war is still happening right here, right now on this soil and all over the world. The earth, I had these conversations um, with a friend of mine yesterday of whether or not the soil on the East Coast, because of what we've done for 600 years or whatever it is that we did since colonization, 400 years, right? Since colonization started here on the East Coast. And, you know, that one of the classes we're going to be doing is on the power of the word. And it's going to go into some Japanese concepts on the idea that words have spiritual power, right? And one of the ideas is that, you know, like the Japanese are very cognizant and someone goes, oh, well, they're very snotty. Well, no, it's not that. It's that they're very cognizant about the words they put up. It's something that I am still learning, but I get it. I get it. Doesn't mean I'm perfect at it, but I get it. And um, so much so that when they die, they recognize that the body gets composted in the soil. Well, what happens if we are energy first? Energy can't be created nor destroyed. And if we are riddled with negative, toxic energy because of the words that we've infused that are filled with toxicity, then what is that doing to the living environment that's around us? 
right? So these are some of the things that we're going to go into some of these power courses, if you're interested in the power of the word and how this happens. Because I was saying, like, on the East Coast, we really have got some serious karmic stuff that's happening. And I'm really feeling like it's coming from the soil, and it's almost like it's infecting us like a virus, spiritually and like why even the spiritual community why we can't why we've colonized a lot of things and why we can't just get our shit together right and why we just poke at people and i go well look at what's been happening for hundreds of years on this soil and we're living we're drinking the water from this soil we're drinking and we're eating the food from this soil and we're doing we're sleeping on this soil so what have we done to heal the soil and amend it and what have we done with the word so when we die and we go into the soil that we change that energy and we change that frequency and vibration. So that's one of the power courses that we're going to be diving into, which is why I've been asking questions about like, when you think of the words that we say, do we understand what we're really saying? Okay, that's, that words have spiritual power. In the West, we understand it as gaslighting, right? We know how to, in, uh, to threaten to disempower and we can do it and we feel it and so much so that we've been doing it for hundreds of years and we don't even know what it feels like to then use it in a positive direction so we're going to talk about that so if you're interested in those classes write in there in the comments that i want in those classes okay so here's the invitation we're going to go in with the eagle and i've been trying i've been feeling with this and I'm feeling, I'm going to be doing some low tone, single vibration, I think, with the bowls this morning. And um, I want you to get square. And we're going to start with the Gokai, taking a deep breath into our power center that we've been doing. And this is going to be an invitation to how are you going to spread? I want you to build a relationship with Eagle in this in this meditation portion i want you to, to ask first of all permission to be here i want you to ask for the eagle to show you what you need to see i want you just to ask it to show you what it's like to soar and i want you to feel that so that you know what it feels like so you have a goal to work towards and as you work towards completing out this year. But we're going to start with the Gokai because, again, words have spiritual power, and this is Japanese concepts. And for those of you who are interested in learning more of this, I have the Jiken and Reiki training coming up in a few weeks. It's going to be closing up soon, and classes are small. So here we go. Hmm. Kyo Dakiwa Ikaruna Shin Pai Suda Kanchaste Kyo Hagame Stoni Shin Satsuni Kyo Dakiwa Ikaruna Shin Pai Suda Kanchaste Kyo Hagame Stoni Shin Satsuni Kyo Dakiwa Ikaruna Shin Pai Suda Kanchaste Kyo Hagame Stoni Shin Satsuni I want you to just focus on breathing into that power center at this time, feeling your shoulders relax, your feet firmly planted on the ground. Breathing in to the womb, exhaling out as we've been doing, seeing this mist moving in, through, and around you like a movie screen, representing all that is, all that was, all that shall be, representing the unconscious, the subconscious, and the whispers of our soul and our spirit. Breathing in and breathing out. Again, seeing the intensity and the vibrations, just feeling when you breathe into the power center, like the breath of the dragon, breathing out. And just feeling that 
and into the mist and into the vibration and frequencies. And inviting, we're going to invite, asking our ancestors for permission for their wisdom and guidance, knowing where we are at and what land that we are residing on at this time and place. For me, I am residing on the land of the Massachusetts people. And we are asking for their guidance to guide us through this mini meditation, to guide us the wisdom and to bring us the eagle and to show us what it is that we need to see that is unseen, to hear what needs to be heard, to feel what needs to be felt. And breathing that in, surrendering into that flow
Father, Son, giving thanks to the ancestors, giving thanks to the eagle, and for all that is and all that was and all that shall be, we give gratitude. We accept the eagle's invitation and embrace the courage that will help us to choose freedom. Freedom from the bondages of the past. Freedom from the egoic mind that is preventing us from being in balance with our soul and with our spirit. The freedom to see and the freedom to choose. We give gratitude and thanks to see through the eyes of the eagle. To let our vision of the whole and of its parts become laser-like and to set our priorities straight. Breathing in and breathing out. Seeing all that is and all that came through from messages if you are visual, the eagle, the ancestors, the unconscious, the subconscious. See it fade back into the mist. Breathing in, back in, and into the power center, back into the womb space. If you're a female, if you are male, the prostate area. And if you identify as one or the other, you can choose whichever you choose. And you take what you need, and with the exhale breath, you compost it, and you let go anything that doesn't serve you, that you would like to return through the exhale breath, through the feet, and back into the earth. Bringing the breath back in to the power center, knowing that this information, this wisdom, is accessible at any time, any place, any who, anywhere. And with the exhale breath, composting out anything that no longer serves into the earth through the feet. And when you're ready, you may open your eyes, move your hands, and move your feet. <sighs> we shake it out. And when you're ready, you may share. If you would like in the comments what, um, what your experience are, because I would like to know. I don't do very well talking to myself, so I do thrive, because I, I would like to know what's working for you, what's not, maybe where you're struggling. If you are, and you, maybe you're afraid because you don't want to offend me, um, that's okay too. Please share like what's working. I can't tell for instance if these bowls because the you know how it comes through through the feed doesn't always resonate the same as what I hear here as it comes through on the mic. So that's important to me. Please share those experiences and um, and I'm feeling the need to go into we're going to close out with a song called We Are In The Flow because I'm feeling the need to sing this today and um, I'm hoping that you will it resonates with you before we go into it I just want to say a few things about the ego so some things to take away I want you to think about like what did you what did you come to do in this life did you come to climb up the ladder of the financial or social success did you come to become a better person or to heal your heart and to realize your essential self? What is your divine mission here on earth? Because when these themes keep repeating, the excuses are being taken away from us. There are no more excuses, of course. Remember, of course there is not enough time or enough money or enough sleep. 
Yet right now you are being encouraged to fly to your chosen purpose. Because if you postpone it, you're going to be betraying yourself, nobody else but yourself. And to look through the eyes of the eagle and consider every obstacle that you're experiencing as an opportunity. So every time an obstacle, I'm hitting a lot. Like I'm dealing with declining health of my parents. I'm declining, um, I'm getting ready to go into court battle regarding my children with my ex fleeing to Florida with my daughter and didn't uh, notify me or the courts didn't get permission. So I'm getting ready to go into another court battle. Okay, all happening at the same time. But I'm still showing up here and I'm still seeing like, okay, what's the opportunity here? I'm trying to focus on the opportunity and what's before me because maybe I may not win in the court, but maybe I'm going to resolve something where I'm actually going to be free. I, I don't know how that's going to play out. So that's why I'm showing up because I want to have my good days and my bad days and I'm hoping even when I have my bad days and I show up here that you guys are bearing witness to what I'm healing and how I'm processing. And that's important as well because I, I know from witnessing one of my teachers going through this was so damn powerful, okay? So where we set our intention is where we're going to end up and to free ourselves and to live for a higher destiny. So we're gonna, we're gonna go into this song here. Um, we are in the flow. So I want you to think about, if you know the song and the lyrics, again, I have the worst voice, <laughs> but it's important to sing because it's frequency, it's vibration, power of the word, right? Kodatama. We are the end. We are the weavers, back of the web. Move it. Where is it stuck? Move with me. I hope I'm not the only one dancing. Now, if this was seven months ago, <laughs> I've come a long way in seven months on dancing and singing because I don't think I'm good at either. So if I can do it, you can do it. Let's do it together. And if you're interested in those classes I mentioned, the power of the word, the power of the pause, the power of processing, or the Bless Your Junk class, that's going to be a four week class, or the eight week um, Rooted in Resilient Empath, please comment in the comments below. And make sure you're on the email list so you can get dibs in on these classes, all right? And I wish you the very best. If you need help and you need resources, be sure to call them in. This is not a time to be processing this stuff alone. As I mentioned before, I hired three folks and I'm gonna be probably hiring more again in the next couple of weeks to make sure that I haven't lost my track, okay? And it's very important to do that. So whether you hire me or somebody else, it is important that we align with the right people to make sure that we are moving in the direction that we need to be. I'm looking forward to this weekend. I'm gonna be facilitating for a domestic violence group I was asked to, invited to be a part of and um, they actually unfortunately had to reduce the size of the retreat um, because of COVID. So unfortunately not as many victims of domestic violence are going to be partaking in this retreat that was set with high standards and we have reduced it to ensure that we are complying with social distance standards and everybody's wearing a mask and everything is in compliance and everything is safe. And so, but I am looking forward to being able to facilitate, we're actually gonna be doing aspects of the, the power, the power of pause, the power of the word, and we're gonna be mishing it with some of the bless your junk uh, aspects um, because they're kind of interwined. And um, so I'm looking forward to doing that this weekend as well as I'm gonna be doing an outdoor psychic medium party. And I'm hoping that I get everything and I told him I wasn't going to do it um if certain protocols weren't in place so i'm looking forward to doing this 
And so I hope you have a great weekend. Post in the weekend, uh, over the weekend, if you have questions um, or if you had an experience and you want to share that experience, please do. I want to be able to be supportive for each other in this group and um, it's very important, all right? Have a great day, everybody. Arigatou gozaimashita.